Hi there, it's Jaakko here and it's time for another Photoshop tutorial. This time I'd like to take a look at how we can take uh, some resources we have created with using digital, digital camera and then how to take these resources to Photoshop and, and create a tileable texture there. So yeah, we are here in Lightroom and you, if you are using another program to manage your digital photos, that's okay as well. I just wanted to kind of show the step that how we can prepare raw image we captured with this little camera and how we can sort of make it nice and make it uh, easy to to then use for tileable textures. So I'd like to go through that process. If you're using other applications such as Apple's um, Apple's uh, equivalent application, or if you're using the Photoshop uh, Raw, which you can use to import raw images to Photoshop, that's the same process is gonna apply. So I just wanted to kind of show you this step of the process. So, so we're in Lightroom, and if you're using this, you can go to develop uh, develop module here, and and there's a bunch of settings here. So you can kind of adjust the uh, exposure so that you get the so that you get the good exposure, you can see the histogram here and you can make sure that the highlights are not clipping and you can kind of zoom in and and just make sure that the image looks good and, and and so on and make sure the white balance looks good. In this case I'm just going to use the as, as a shot from basically from the camera. That, and then uh, we have a bunch of other things. Um, sharpening, this is kind of good to do here I prefer usually to sharpen the image here so that we can get enough detail but but it's also important not to go overboard with this because if you go like way crazy it's gonna get really noisy and then if you are gonna be creating normal maps out of this it's gonna be almost impossible so so it's kind of important to, to kind of find a nice balance here to have enough detail but not to go overboard so yeah let's do that so then we have um, lens corrections and this is the thing that will really help us so so nowadays we if you capture image by using digital camera the image will have metadata in it and the metadata will include the camera maker the lens maker and lens model and lens lens uh, profile uh, in it so if we enable this uh, it's gonna do that and it's gonna automatically normally recognize our lens if it doesn't recognize we can still select the lens from here and and the model from here, the maker and the model. And so in my case, I use Tamron lens and, and so on. And what's really cool about this is that it will automatically correct the a sort of a uh, problem with lenses that the corners are always uh, appeared more darker than the center of the image. And this will uh, be a big problem for us. If we want to make this tileable texture, uh, the corners are going to be darker and it's going to be really, really difficult to deal with that. So this is the reason why we wanted to show you this that, that when you're dealing with raw images you can do this and you can save yourself a lot of work by doing this in this way. So you can actually adjust the distortion and kind of if you are dealing with some kind of a, like fabric patterns which has lines in it and you make sure that the lines are straight it's really important to sort of take a look at this distortion and kind of adjust it. You might have to a little bit adjust it if it's necessary but uh, in my case this isn't really important so I'm just gonna leave it leave it off because I think this looks uh, good to me. And then the vignetting is um, just want to make sure that the corners don't appear too too dark and this might sometimes maybe make them kind of bright. I'm not quite sure the default setting was around here but I'm gonna go like let's say I'm gonna go all the way to 200 to see what it gives us and then effects we want to leave this default we don't want to touch any of those. So then uh, we can just go in there and export. I'm gonna use the shortcut in I'm in Mac, so Shift Command E. So we can just export the image in Photoshop format in here. I'm just gonna leave everything in default. We don't want any sharpening and we don't want any res resize things in here. I'm gonna export this and I'm gonna just uh, do over because actually we kind of sort of tested this before so. So it's a pretty big file, it's 102 megabytes, but yeah, um, we can see a lot of lot of detail if you go like 100% here, the detail came out really well. And one thing, by the way, if you look at, look at images like this, uh, almost no matter what lens you use, always the edges are more soft, they have this sort of like softness thing happening. If you look at the center of the image, you can notice that always we get a better quality in the center so 
obviously we do want to get we do want to kind of look at the where we have a nice spot in the center and then use the center part rather than using the these because you know it can kind of get soft in the uh, in the edges so that you know it's the way how digital cameras and how the, how the lenses really work so so lenses have this sort of a sweet spot in them that certain combinations of focal length and and the aperture and, and the aperture size so uh, certain combinations have this sweet spot where you can get the best sharpness and so on so but i was just snapping around and i really didn't think about that so so you know if you're capturing you can kind of search from the internet that your lens and then look at the, the best combo for for the absolute uh, corner sharpness of your lens so yeah just a little talk about that so so let's take uh, this crop and let's just go and crop this something like that and I'm just gonna like go here and sort of like find some find some place where we don't have like whole a lot of these larger details because if we are creating tileable texture these larger details are gonna be repeated over and over and they're gonna it's gonna make the texture look like more tileable or, or more tiling so it's, it's gonna be not really nice if we if we want to make the texture look like uniform and standard so sort of like a like it's more like just not so specific kind of a texture yeah <clears throat> so so if you have larger uh, details in here uh, they are just going to be repeated over and over again so we want to select an area where we don't have a whole lot of those those larger uh, larger details so i'm just going to hit enter and and kind of see what we did and and yeah so um i'm just gonna uh, do it again yeah so here we are and and now what we want to do is that we want to kind of get rid of these uh, larger details now so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to copy this duplicate this layer a couple of times and we can just uh, uh uncheck this background layer we can have it as a sort of as a backup for us so if something goes wrong we can get it back from there so now before i go further i want to kind of resize this to to make it easier to calculate the the wrapping so yeah i'm seeing that we have like 2849 pixels here so i want to go like uh, something that is power empowered too so i'm gonna go like um 2048 here and and this will down resemble the image downsize so it's gonna maybe Im improve the details a little bit and maybe get rid of the little of the softness what we had so this will probably do it for us we can use a big bike a big thing in here probably that will look let's see how it looks like yeah so we got now the image resized and it looks pretty we can see that it's sharp everywhere we don't have any any problems whatsoever here so now uh, i'm going to show you one trick so so we have now two copies in here and they are identical we can go to filter other and we can choose offset and now i actually already punched the values but you can kind of see that that we get this uh, thing it's wrapping around itself now and uh, if we move around we can probably kind of see it's we are really lucky because this image is like appearing super seamless normally it isn't this easy but but yeah so i'm gonna punch in here now we know that it was 2048 so i'm gonna just punch in half the values here so now we know that the seam is gonna be crossing the center so just for uh so these are now the two images one is this and one is this and this is like the wraparound version so now um, we have this one and this one on the background so we want to go here and make a mask in here a layer mask and this is very nice way to do this is very non-destructive way to, and i prefer always to do it this way so that uh, we, we get to work with uh, work with masks without destroying anything so yes so when you use this, you can use a brush, and and I like to use this kind of a crunchy, kind of like a ragged, ragged kind of a, a, a noisy. What, what how do you call this? Kind of like a crunchy brush, and and we can see that in the previous order when you hover the image in here. I got some of these brushes from a friend and other from the colleague, and and these have sort of just uh, kind of accumulated over the years, and and I really dig these. These are really nice. These are definitely way better than using these soft brushes for this kind of work. So I really recommend to look around for them and you can find them from the internet and you can also create them by yourself. So these are going to come really handy when you're dealing with 
work, work such as this so so yeah I'm gonna just pick up uh, one of them maybe um, this one and, and now that we have this selected we can just go and paint the black because in a mask black means that you hide something and white means that you reveal something so so we can actually just select this one and kind of paint over this one maybe select a little bit smaller brush size so I'm gonna actually use my vacuum tablet here because it's a little bit easier to do it that way so I'm just gonna kind of paint around here and and what's really cool about this is that we can just hit X in your keyboard and we can again reveal. So we can sort of uh, hide and reveal. It's really nice work workflow. So I'm gonna again hide this. Maybe I'm gonna actually go and uh, select a little bit sl smaller brush size in, in this case. Oh, I actually s switched to but no, no problems there. So uh, I'm gonna be again hiding this detail in here. And then I'm going to hit X again to to sort of uh, you know switch between these. So we are kind of a uh, all, all the time just hitting X and and kind of hiding some things that might otherwise be just uh, too much repeaty. And again, hit X to to switch, and again hit X to to go back to black. So we are like again hiding and. Just kind of get in there. This is gonna be like super nasty detail if that's if that that would be in there, and just kind of make sure that that we get sort of a generic looking uh, thing without any any large details pop popping up. So yeah, I think this looks pretty good. Uh, I'm kind of getting I'm gonna get good vibes about this. It looks looks um, looks pretty generic and looks. We can actually kind of zoom in and and see how how it looks like that. So. Already, this could be kind of something that might actually kind of work, but but I want to instead um, just to make sure, kind of go a little bit more further in there and tweak some little more. Uh, uh, again, I did something wrong. Uh, let me see. I'm just gonna. Uh, okay, yeah, actually, we can see that the leaf came back, but you can just hit X and sort of go in there and hide it again. Maybe we can get a bit better result more natural result that way and we just want to be sure that we don't go to the edges too much because the edges might actually cause a little bit of trouble dust and later so uh, I'm trying to, to stay away from the edges so just kind of see that how it looks like and we have these dark areas here which we might want to just a little bit get rid of those dark, dark spots, spots here yeah so um, I'm kind of starting to dig this looks uh, looks pretty decent uh, we have like this branch here and we just want to hide that branch because yeah you know it, it's um, I'm, rem I'm remembering the shortcut from I think the brush <laughs> so I mean I was hitting S you know to try to resize the tool but um, yeah no problems there okay so yeah um, I'm gonna say that this is something that uh, I dig now so um, I'm gonna go and zoom out and just kind of make a final look. Okay, we are looking good. So, so what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna take these two layers and I'm just gonna duplicate them and I'm gonna hide the other layers. So these are sort of our backup, so we can go back to them if we want. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna um, do a destructive a flatten image here and mm, discard hidden layers. No. Ah, yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, I meant merge layers, not flatten image. Dummy me. Okay, so here we are, and now we can actually do one more time. We can do, duplicate this, and we can do, use another offset. So we can kind of now switch between these, and we can see that we miss one branch in here. Here, you know, uh, there's one this branch, and we can again do mask, and then again hit uh, B for brush, and just go in there, and hide this branch which we sort of forgot there yeah so uh, basically this is what it is now we know that already we have a pretty much a tiling texture in here and we can actually just merge uh, merge these layers again and we can just do it one more time to sort of see that how this really so we can actually see how we are we're in pretty good shape here zoom out and kind of see from a distance because you, it's really good to zoom out and sort of Im imagine that if you're using this for for game engine or something you might be actually looking at it from 
for example from this this distance so you can get the idea that how it's gonna how it's gonna really look like in the final version now we could be done but I want to show you one more th thing here uh, I want to show you this application called bitmap to material and this is very nice application from the makers of a substance designer the algorithmic and bitmap to material is is a very nice way to to get uh, data from uh, from sources such as these little photos and turn that into uh, normal maps and for roughness maps and for basically all the set of the maps height maps and everything and and this is a very nice way to do that so i'd like to show you this so i'm going to go and save our data in here i'm going to go to tiling texture and we're going to call this uh, uh let's go ground and i'm going to save it and launch a bitmap bitmap material and 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 this is really nice i mean the the workflow whole workflow thing is just uh, absolutely brilliant in here now we have this main input here what we want to do is that we want to click this and we want to go and uh, select our um our file in here so i loaded the texture what we created to to here and we can always see that the tiling that it is really tiling and it, it does tile tile pretty well but there are a couple of settings that we can actually tweak this and so we have now loaded this and we have the output size and we can kind of maybe make it a little bit uh, higher higher detail in here and and we are actually be previewing the uh, the tiling in here like we can actually probably call two materials and and edit and we can see we are tiling 10 times now so it's uh, depending on what we are doing it's it's kind of you can see that now you can see the repeating pattern but but in the game engine if you do something like this you're probably going to be using other textures also there and there's also uh, kind of neat tricks what you can use in here but yes i'm just going to put it like a, maybe like around here so we can just get the idea get the idea what we're doing and and then we have this um, light equalizer here which will um, help to sort of smooth out but but we already sort of did this and and, and we don't really need to do this. This is just gonna get rid of the details. I'm gonna leave it like that. And we already have it making tile. We don't need to make tile because we already have it in tile. And, and we can sometimes double this on and off and kind of see which is better. And I'm not quite sure which would be better in our case. I think probably probably this is better in our case. And and so on. And we have plenty of, plenty of options in here. I don't want to go to too much detail in here because this is this is just about uh, making tiling texture basically so uh so you can play around with settings but yeah this is really nice way to to go further to take the next step and then take make your texture into normal map and create all those maps in here so yes a little tip about bitmap bitmap material uh, from algorithmic so so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial it's a very nice way to to make texture styling and make make resources that you can use over and over again in your projects and and if you have a mobile phone and you go out it's just you can snap pictures even with uh, even with that and you can just just try to make sure that the images don't have any bright areas or dark areas and that they are lit as uniformly as possible in order to get a good result and and well it's preferable to use a uh, raw raw from your camera but you can still use uh, even jpeg or something like that if if they're just good good enough for you so yes um, i hope you enjoyed and please subscribe if you don't mind it will be great and i hope to see you soon thank you and bye bye